Hi everyone. I wasn't going to share these soaps, the making of these soaps in a video. These were just some batches that I was going to make just by myself quietly one day <laughs> uh, to restock my personal stash and to make a batch for my friends. And I did need some soap for some gifts that I wanted to give in a couple of months time. So I was kind of thinking I'll just make these and then progress with my videos that I had planned on more specific topics. But I remembered the multi-session soap batch video I shared quite a while ago. Everybody really loved it. So I thought I'd just record this. So this is just me kind of making soap. I'm a little bit rusty. I don't make a lot of soap. I only really make it for my videos and for personal use. So I'm not somebody who makes soap every week. Um, so you're gonna see me kind of make a few little stuff ups, um, but that's all right. I think you'll find it enjoyable. These three recipes are all made with seawater. So I don't know if you saw, but recently I had a little break over on North Stradbroke Island. Um, you can see my recent update video on that if you didn't see it. And I always collect some beautiful um, Pacific, East Coast Australia seawater when I'm there. So I wanted to use that in all of these. So they're all made with seawater, which gives them a bit of salt and hardness, which is good. I also tried citric acid for the first time in these recipes. So it was kind of cool to try that out. Citric acid is a chelator and what it does is it helps to bind the minerals in the water when you use it in soap and it reduces soap scum. It also helps your bars to last longer. So it kind of, it's not a preservative, but, but it has that um, effect on your soap as well. It reduces rancidity in your oils. So I made three batches um, and I'll, you're just gonna see me go through the whole lot. I've edited it as tightly as I possibly can and I'll just talk over the top and explain what I'm doing and I'll put all the um, details for the recipes if you wanna give them a go in the description box. Also make sure you watch all the way to the end because I show the full process including, um, it took quite a while for me to be able to cut these soaps so you're gonna see all the cutting and also just this morning you'll see that um, it's nearly a week later and I trim the soaps as well and just pH test them, everything, the full, the full deal. So I hope you enjoyed everyone. Um, let's go. The first thing I always do when I'm making soap is I cover up my bench. This is just some clear PVC plastic sheeting that I bought from Bunnings, I think, here in Australia. I think you can get it from Spotlight as well. The Aussies will know what I'm talking about. Um, and I've pre-lined my moulds. You can see that I've used brown paper on there. It's just non-stick baking paper or parchment paper. Um, they're, they're just the old Kmart moulds that I've, I've had for ages. I just use them. They work quite well, lined with that paper. And these are my little jars that I use for my essential oil blends. I like to get all of these slow, tedious tasks done first um, and get everything ready um, before I even begin to look at <laughs> mixing lye solutions and making the soap. So I'm making three soaps today. This is the essential oil blend for the first one. I'll put the details in the link in the description if anybody wants to try and make these soaps. Um, but this first one, it's got quite a lot of different, I think it's got seven different essential oils in it, including patchouli at the end, which you probably saw made the color of it go quite a brown color. It's beautiful. That's going in my, what I call my Stratty Solsife soap, um, which all my family really loves that one. Um, this second one, I'm pretty sure that's my lemon, myrtle and lavender. Um, so I've done that and the final one here, the third one is rose geranium with some rosewood added. Um, and that's for my pink clay soap that I make for my friend Alison. Um, I've made that soap or versions of this soap a few times on this channel and all of them were made for, <laughs> for Alison. <laughs> that's her favorite soap. So yeah, I really needed to, um, catch up with that for her. This is me weighing out the citric acid. This is my first time using citric acid in a soap 
recipe. Um, you can see mine kind of stuck in my container a little bit there. You have to weigh it quite precisely and there's lots of ways you can use citric acid in soap recipes. You can dissolve it in the water for your lye solution um, but it does get quite reactive when you add the sodium hydroxide so I'm actually going to mix a citric acid solution separately. I'm just measuring out the three amounts of citric acid that I need for each of my three soap batches and then I um, mix them with each with water, about double the amount of water to dissolve the citric acid. Um, I thought of maybe using it in the lye solution but I heard that it can be quite fizzy and reactive and I was reading some other stuff about sodium hydroxide reactions and I really thought oh, I'm just going to do it separately. So I've got my three lots. The two larger soap batches uh, are the same recipe which is why I've just got these citric acid solutions in the same size bowls. I can interchange them. They're, those two recipes are the same and the little one that's for the rose geranium batch which is a different recipe. It will all make sense when you have a look at my blog post with all the recipe details. But anyway, so I've got three citric acid solutions there. This is some oats, some beautiful whole oats from a farm in Victoria that I use for my bread making, my sourdough making. Um, but I thought I wanted to make a creamy oat soap. So I've kind of ground up some rolled oats and sieved out the flour. And then I decided to put the chunky bits back into my mortar and pestle and see if I could get some more flour out of it. Um, I'm just kind of mucking around here really, which is what I do generally when I make soap, I <laughs> try out different things. So I've just kind of ground that up as finely as I can. I actually end up, you'll see later, I end up putting um, all of it into the soap at various points, <laughs> but um, I wanted to sort of extract some of the finer flour. So I've got that ready. That's going in the lemon myrtle and lavender soap which you will see. It will all make sense as I go along. This is me getting my colours out or the things that I'm using for my colours and out of all those things I pulled out the only one I need to do any pre-preparation with is the indigo. So this is blue indigo powder which I just sort of semi dissolve into some water. Um, it doesn't dissolve in oil it, it does actually dissolves best in an alkaline solution, but I don't want to add any more alkaline to my soap. Um, so I just dissolve it in a bit of water and that seems to work pretty well. And here we go. I'm ready to start getting my oils ready and I'm starting with the rose geranium soap for Alison. Hope you enjoy watching this, Ali. If you are watching it, I'll bet she won't, <laughs> but that's okay. She is into, into using the soap, not watching the soap videos. Um, so I've got my shea butter and I'm adding coconut oil to that and I'm going to melt them in my microwave. Uh, it's winter here, middle of winter in the southern hemisphere so things are quite cold and solid um, so definitely good to enlist the help of your stove or your microwave to melt your hard fats and oils. Um, all of the, as I said, all of the ingredients and everything I'm using will be in the description box or a link there. So I didn't want to put too much detail of everything that I put in this video. It's already going to be quite long and detailed just visually. Um, so I just decided to keep it simple for the demonstration. See how I can see my ring through that? That's what you want. If you're melting shea butter and coconut oil and things like that, you want to make sure it's really nice and clear. Now to that, I'm adding olive oil. So for this soap recipe, I use shea butter, olive oil and coconut oil, I think. Yes, just those three. So I'm just mixing in my olive oil. Now I'm getting ready to make my lye solution. So safety goggles on and gloves on. I didn't wear a mask on this day. You can see probably on the left there, I've got my window open. I just sort of stand back and stay out of the way. And as I said before, all of these soaps are made with seawater. So that was my seawater that I just had in that soda water bottle. Put that in my jug and then measure out my sodium hydroxide into a separate container. 
just get it out with a spoon very carefully you've got to be super accurate with this part and just take it slow and be really careful and when you're ready slowly add the sodium hydroxide into your water you don't have to use salt water um, in the recipe link I will put instructions for how to make salt water if you would like to use salt water but don't have access to nice sea water which you won't all have um, but you can just use plain water as well that's quite okay so just stir that gently until it, the sodium hydroxide is completely dissolved this is the other thing I'm adding to all of these soaps which I haven't done for years um, sugar syrup I've actually filmed another video about how to make this sugar syrup and um, and how to use it in soap recipes but basically it's just a strong sugar syrup uh, sugar dissolved in water and I'm adding that into my soap batch at a rate of 2% of the oil amount um, again the link with the recipe details will will explain that a bit more so I've got my sugar syrup ready my oils are ready the sugar syrup and the citric acid solution they go in at the start this is just my way of doing it as I said I've never made soaps with citric acid before so this is all a bit new for me and I thought you guys might be interested to see it as well now I'm adding some white clay and some pink Australian clay uh, which is a lovely combination for this beautiful rose geranium soap uh, it's just gorgeous I like to blend my clays in if I can blend them in before I add the lye solution um, and I did that and I thought no I wanted to make it a bit more pink I think one of the last batches I made with this I didn't make it pink enough and I wanted this one a little bit more robust robustly colored so I'm just adding some more clay in there this soap does tend to saponify quite quickly. Rose geranium and rosewood essential oils do accelerate trace and saponification. So I like to kind of get everything ready and then add the lye solution at the end. So you can see here I'm adding in the essential oils at the beginning as well after I've got the clays and everything all mixed through. So the essential oils, everything is in there now except the lye solution which I just pour in now now this is so interesting I had heard from my buddy George from Dawn Organics <laughs> thanks for all your citric acid experiments George and information it's been really helpful I knew that citric acid would slow down the trace of this soap but I didn't quite realize how much it would slow it down um, also I'm using a citric, citric acid solution which adds more water to the soap recipe which also slows it down so I ended up getting my stick blender out which normally I don't have to do for this soap and I had to blend it more than I thought so this is a good thing citric acid slowing it all down I'm really liking it at this point um, normally this soap would be almost soap on a stick by now so that was really fascinating the other thing which I don't know if you guys have picked up on this yet but the color of this pink clay soap is much brighter I know I did put a bit more in than I normally do but it's not normally that bright it's a really gorgeous fresh pink color whereas normally it's a bit more of a smoky color and I don't know whether that's because of the citric acid or not I really don't know I have made this soap years ago with sugar in it so I don't think it's the sugar and not much else is different except maybe the shea butter usually I change the recipes each time I make this soap so I don't know anyway I'll have to find out a bit more about that so I've just poured this soap in just a plain single color and um, I just wait for it to thicken up a little bit don't forget to take cool photos of your soap <laughs> I always take heaps of photos as I'm filming. You never know when you might get a good shot to share with people. Um, yeah, and just wait for it to thicken up and do a little bit of a chopstick swirl. And then it goes into my cooler where I put, you'll see a bit later, I put all of my soaps in a cooler to um, saponify. Now between batches, I just kind of 
I try and scrape out as much soap as I possibly can out of my jug because I just use the same jug and we're about to do the second soap now um, but clean up your stick blender a little bit as well just because so you don't get those colors in so now I'm going to do the second one so I'm kind of just getting everything ready visually and separating that out from the, the third one for this recipe for these second the second and the third recipe this is going to be the lemon myrtle creamy oat one I'm using some palm oil in this recipe uh, and here's me getting the sugar syrup for this recipe as well doing that at the beginning I follow the same kind of method for each one and palm oil needs to be melted um, before and stirred before it's measured out if it's solid um, it does the fatty acids do separate out as it cools and solidifies so each time you use it you have to make sure that you fully melt it and stir it um, and I when I bought this I decanted it into these small containers just for that purpose um, and here's me getting a bit more coconut oil um, because I didn't have that much in my jar I'm still trying to use up this massive big bucket that I bought years ago when I was making soap to sell I'm still going through it it's getting pretty ancient now but it's it's okay coconut oil has got a pretty long shelf life um, and then I realized it didn't actually fit that that jar didn't fit in my microwave so I had to put it into a jug um, so just as I'm getting the oils ready for this I'm putting some shea butter in there you can see I'm kind of getting it already bit by bit microwaving and digging bits out um, just about the palm oil so I've bought this palm oil to try out a while back and I had it there and I wanted to use it up it is sustainably sourced palm oil and I'll put some links in the description about different points of view on the use of palm oil in soap making um, it's a pretty hotly debated topic uh, it's a bit controversial I'm not sure that it is all evil um, like a lot of us kind of tend to think um, there's issues with lots of oils in soap making and the way they're used and and whether or not they're grown sustainably this is the olive oil going in um, so yeah I, look I'm just using this up because it's what I have but if you want to make another recipe um, you'll have to recalculate a new recipe if you wanted to make these soaps without palm oil you could substitute the palm oil for beef tallow, beef fat, or lard if you had those. They would, they're a direct sub, they're the only direct substitute for palm oil actually. Um, so my oils and my fats are all ready. You probably saw that as I was talking about palm oil. And now I'm getting my lye solution ready. It's the same, it's not the same ingredients, same amounts as the previous recipe, but the process is the same. So measure out the water first then the sodium hydroxide separately and then slowly mix the two together and into my oils see that olive oil made that um, made this soap quite the oil batch quite green um, it's nice extra virgin olive oil uh, to this soap this is the lemon myrtle one I'm adding some Brazilian gold clay that's that yellowy kind of clay on the left there and that was the oats going in see how the oats just dissolve really easily into the oil that's because they're quite fatty oats are a fatty grain they're wonderful in soap making so you get a, kind of get a little bit of an oaty super fat when you add oats to your soap some bit of trivia for you and I also add some white clay in there so I'm just blending those all through thoroughly um, before I add the lye solution in and I decide to add a few more oats I didn't really think this through um, like I said I'm just kind of making this to give to some friends and for our personal use so generally when I'm just making soap for myself I like to just have fun and kind of the things that I can make up as I go I like to just play around with them as I go here's the lye solution going in in retrospect I think I would have left out the gold clay or uh, left out the oats maybe I changed this up a little bit because I ended up doing two layers and there wasn't much differentiation between the layers um, I could have got a better a better discernment between the layers but um, 
I didn't know I was going to do layers until I started pouring it. <laughs> so that's just the way it goes. Uh, so I stick blended it there. The, the lye solution went in, stick blended it, and the essential oils went in at the last minute. Lemon myrtle can speed up trace, but again, I got a nice slow trace, and that would be due to this citric acid solution in these soaps. So I've done one layer there, and you can see that I decided to try and make a slightly different color and texture for the top layer. So I'm adding in all that oat bran, and I added in some more white clay, and um, blended that through. You do see a little bit of a, a difference in the layers, but it's fairly subtle, but it, it's okay. It's this soap, I'm actually going to give some of these bars to the to the farm, the farmers that grow these oats. Um, I'm doing a trip down to Victoria later in the year, and I really want to give them some of these soaps, so it's a bit special. So hopefully they like it. Um, and I'm just pouring this top layer over my spoon and that just helps helps it keep a nice straight line between the layers. If you pour it straight in, it, the top layer will go through the bottom layer and you won't get a nice sort of straight line in between the layers. So pour it over a spoon and it goes in quite gently then. I decided to texture this a little bit with a spoon but it was still a bit too runny so I went and did a bit of cleaning up while I was waiting. This is my kitchen, <laughs> bit of a mess. <laughs> this is what it really looks like. A lot of you comment on how clean and neat everything is but it often gets a bit chaotic uh, in the middle of a soap making session. Uh, so I thought I'd show you that for fun and here I am, the soap has set up a bit more now so just give it a little bit of a texture with a spoon. Beautiful, glossy, fresh soap batter. I never tire of that. It's a lovely thing. And it smells amazing. Lemon myrtle and lavender are a really nice little combination. Lemon myrtle is a rainforest plant from native to Queensland. It's um, just some oats going on the top there. Uh, it's a lovely lemony herbaceous fresh beautiful scent and wonderful in soap so that's that one done the lemon myrtle and creamy oat and now for the final one my famous well it's famous in my small local circles uh, this is my strati salsife and this it's actually the recipe is different because this is the same soap base recipe as the lemon myrtle one it's um, shea butter um, olive oil, coconut oil and the palm oil. Uh, these two, second two recipes are the same. Um, but the essential oil blend that I use for this is one that I came up with many, many years ago when I first started soap making um, one of my island trips over to North Stradbroke Island. And um, it's just a beautiful blend and my mum and everybody really likes it and it's one of my favourites too. So it's a bit special and I hadn't actually made it with the proper blend for years so I thought I'd make some of that today. So in goes all the different oils that I'm using. That olive oil is quite a dark colour and you do see a little bit of the yellow from that olive oil in the finished soap but that's okay. Just getting my sodium hydroxide ready. That goes into my seawater. I hope this isn't all going too quick for you. I did speed it up because there was a lot of footage. I was pretty much took quite a long time to make all these soaps. Um, the sugar syrup went into the oils, the citric acid solution went into the oils, and then I tip in the lye solution. There's no colours in here yet. I, do, I separate this one out. So give that a stick blend just until it just emulsifies. I don't want to do any more than that because I'm going to colour this three ways. But before you colour it, you want to get that essential oil in because that's really annoying when you forget to do that. <laughs> and then I just guesstimate uh, dividing this soap batch into my three little smaller jugs here. In the middle one I'm using French green clay, the one on the left is white clay and the one on the right is white clay and indigo. So I'm kind of going for a blue, green and white 
theme. The colors look a bit drab right there. You can't really tell, but in the finish, so they're not too bad. Um, I actually discovered as I was filming this that my battery was about to run out on my camera. So I was going crazy fast trying to do this. So it didn't turn out as nicely as it normally does. But I do have another video for this soap, which is a better example of um, how I do the pouring. It's basically a simple drop swirl. You just layer by layer, just alternate, go through pouring in each of the colors on top of each other. Um, that's the green and you can see the blue in the middle and this is the kind of white or pale creamy color just kind of put them in but I'll put a link to the other video that I have for this this other soap um, the original seawater soap video that I did if you want a better demonstration this is just a quick kind of speed through so you can see what I did um, you can really play around with this design as much as you want I just kind of pour them all in <laughs> in layers and then do a little bit of a pull through all the way through with the chopstick just to break it up a little bit it looks quite good poured without the chopstick swirl as well but um, you know I'm sure you guys have all got better soap design pouring skills than I do um, and this is my setup where I put all the soaps to saponify you can see I've got a bit of soda ash on these um, because of the higher water amount but they're just beautiful um, and I did take these out after 24 hours or so but they were still quite soft so this is me actually a few days later cutting them they were still a bit soft and I think I'm not sure if that's the citric acid or if that's because I had extra water because of the citric acid solution solution that I used this is a lovely oat one. You can see I've got a little bit of a differentiation there in the colours. Um, I quite look like the look of that. Beautiful soap. And this is the... Oh, I see how soft that is. Yeah, that's not good. I actually ended up leaving this one for another day and came back and um, cut it the, the following day. This one was a lot softer than the others. I've never had this before. And I checked the water amounts. I don't think it's the water amount because this is obviously you wouldn't have this issue if you were using a wire cutter. I use the knife, so it becomes a really obvious thing. Um, so if you're using a wire cutter, it'd be fine. But I have a feeling the citric acid make the soap a bit softer. And so I hope that wasn't all too fast for you and you followed it. But here I am a week later. This is uh, just trimming the soaps now. Um, because they were so soft I did get a bit of kind of soap gummy stuff left all over them but that's all right after they've had a week to harden a bit they've just been down in my laundry rack um, they trim up just beautifully with a little cheese slicer just kind of bevels the edges a little bit you just use a very light touch you don't want to take too much soap off just really gently trim off any any bits and make them all pretty and they're just gorgeous. Uh, I also pH test my soap before I continue them for storage just to make sure they're all fine. Um, you can see that one came out green. I've got a video on how to do this uh, if you want a bit more detail, if you're not sure about this process. I'm just using pH test strip paper to test each of the soaps to make sure that they are fully saponified and that they are safe to use. And I will put these away now to cure for at least six weeks. So they'll be ready before I go on my trip to Victoria in September. And they will be gorgeous. I love this part. This is my favorite part about soap making is this final satisfact satisfying moment where you go, oh wow, look what I made. <laughs> Happy soap maker. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate your support so much. Hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.
Bye.